the big YouTube channels. And by big, I'm talking about the YouTube channels with millions of subscribers. Let's talk about how they approach Linux, how they cover Linux. So the big YouTube channels, let's talk about the big YouTube gaming channels. Those are the ones with tens of millions of subscribers, some of them. They give Linux very little coverage, and the coverage they do give to Linux is usually bad. It's usually not factually accurate. The big YouTube tech channels. So I'm subscribed personally to both Linus Tech Tips and Marcus Brownlee, both great channels. Both of those guys have over 8 million subscribers. Occasionally they mention Linux. Their coverage of Linux, again, is brief and sometimes not factually accurate. Uh, Linus Tech Tips in particular, I'll, I'll mention a couple of videos I've watched of him in the past few months about Linux that were not good, in my opinion, as far as accuracy and being factually correct. So why do the big YouTube channels, why do they give Linux so little coverage? And when they do mention Linux, why do they struggle with Linux? That's our topic for today. Let's get started. So earlier today, what, what got me thinking about this, this topic, I, I've thought about it for a while now, but earlier today I was checking out Linus Tech Tips. And again, I don't watch all of his stuff. I, I, some of his stuff is okay, but much of what he does is for entertainment purposes rather than educational purposes you know i like to to learn something when i watch youtube videos i i normally don't watch uh you know just something just for for fun you know I, i'm usually searching for a topic and i want to be educated on a topic but anyway i noticed that linus here was doing this video can this usb stick resurrect your old pc and basically this video is about a 80 dollar usb stick that has i think either Manjaro or some other Linux, maybe it was Lubuntu, some lightweight Linux distribution. Uh, you know, it's, it's a free Linux distribution on a USB stick that some company is selling for 80 bucks and Linus was reviewing it. And I thought, well, uh, that is a complete scam for one thing, selling an $80 USB stick with a free operating system on it. But besides that point, uh, is this the best coverage you can give to Linux? And why is he even reviewing this thing? Well, he's reviewing this thing, of course, because I'm sure he, some money changed hands. He probably got paid to do this review. I, I don't know that for a fact, but much of what he does on his channel, he gets paid to review the products that he reviews. I mean, it's a tech channel. So especially the big tech channels, because they get millions of views on their videos, companies pay them and sometimes pay them big money to review products. So the review channels, they typically, well, one thing, how do they get popular? Well, again, they have to be entertaining. They typically use sensational <laughs> clickbaity kind of titles. Uh, and it's all about generating revenue for their videos, because the more eyes on their videos, the more money they make, the more potential companies, advertising companies and whatnot sponsors uh, come to them to give them more money to review their products and software and whatnot. So some of the top, you know, tech YouTube channels, the ones with millions of subs like Linus Tech Tips and Marcus Brownlee and whatnot, they get paid to feature the products that they review on their videos. So I recall a, a while back, a, a guy on Reddit actually posted that he worked for a large gaming company, a gaming company that makes, you know, some AAA titles, and that a large tech-related YouTube channel, I think it was actually a gaming-related YouTube channel, approached their company and asked the company to pay him $22,000 to review their game on his, again, very popular YouTube channel. <laughs> so, some YouTubers, they're willing to promote, you know, software and games and products if you're willing to you know, pay them a little money. Some of them, uh, especially if you're a smaller company, they'll review your product or your software or whatnot if you promise to give them a percentage of your total gross <laughs> revenue. I mean, it's crazy what, what some of these channels uh, are, are doing. Now, why do I mention that the fact that, you know, these channels get paid to review these products and the software and the services and everything that they review on their channels, the big tech channels, the big gaming channels, it's because of how this hurts the little guy, the little guy without deep pockets, for example. So I'm talking about free and open source software developers. 
for those of you that, that are into gaming, I'm talking about indie game devs. They can't just give somebody ten, twenty thousand dollars to review their game on a, some popular YouTube channel. They don't have those funds. They don't. And with free and open source software, for example, many of these projects don't generate any revenue at all. Right? Indie game developers. I mean, they can send their game free to some big gaming channel. Maybe give them a free game key so they can play it. But unless the YouTuber is seriously interested in that indie game, he's not going to review it because there's no money in it for him. He's not getting paid to review it. You know, there's so many other uh, game companies throwing money at these big channels to review their products. Th they're not going to take the time to focus on things like indie games. The tech channels are not going to focus, you know, on the smaller tech companies. If they review software, it is almost always going to be proprietary software because that's where the money's at. That's where, you know, the companies make money with software. It's proprietary software. Free and open source software typically just does not generate any money. So these channels, they can't profit from Linux. They can't really profit from open source software. Now, it's hard to take a lot of these big tech channels and the big gaming channels seriously because nothing they do is genuine. And by being genuine, I mean, obviously, their reviews are not genuine because they're paid reviews, right? They're paid to shield these products. But other than that, they're also not genuine in the way they act. <laughs> Getting off topic for a second, I mean, these gaming channels and even the tech channels, uh, I mean, these people, I, mean, I see grown men, men in their 30s and 40s, you know, running around speaking very fast and high-pitched, squeaky voices like they're 14 years old and are ADHD and off their meds. But I digress. Circling back around to Linux and open source software, where's the money in it, right? The big tech channels, when they mention Linux, it's, it's going to be a brief mention. Usually they don't put any real effort into it. They don't put real research into the topic they're, they're covering. That's why their videos on Linux typically are really bad. The Linux community, I mean, it, it, when a big YouTuber makes a video about Linux, before we even watch the video, we already know it's going to be bad. Why? Because they're always bad. <laughs> Nobody really covers Linux in a serious way in mainstream media. And I would say the big YouTube channels, because YouTube is kind of mainstream these days. The really big YouTube channels, they're mainstream media. And mainstream media typically doesn't cover Linux, and if they do cover Linux, they don't do it in a good way. Why? Money. Most open source projects, they don't make any money. Open source... Most open source projects don't generate any revenue at all. Very few make any money, make enough money to hire full-time developers, for example. Most of them can't hire staff. Most open source projects depend on the goodwill of the community to su survive. Uh, they depend on people contributing code, artwork, documentation, contributing money through donations. Um, that's not the kind of thing that is going to pay these big gaming channels and these big uh, tech channels money to review their their products due to the fact that Linux and open source have limited resources as far as money and the fact that absolutely no money is spent marketing the free and open source software movements can we ever expect Linux to become main mainstream so why can't the big YouTube channels get it right when they speak about Linux uh, why are their videos typically bad it's because some of the problems that plague Linux uh, just regular users like you and me really plague people that don't live in Linux full time. And these big channels, these big gaming channels, they're all using Windows and consoles. They're not gaming on Linux all the time. They, many of them, uh, if they do a video about gaming on Linux, that might be the first time they've ever tried Linux in their life. Same thing with people like uh, Linus Tech Tips. You know, if he's mentioning Linux, I, I'm sure he's installed Ubuntu a couple of times, maybe tried things on a live USB stick. But if you've never actually lived in Linux for a while, you're going to struggle with it. You know, you're going to struggle speaking intelligently about it. And, and again, some of the problems that just plague users with Linux. Uh, too many choices and there's just a million distros out there right there's over 300 linux distributions listed on distrowatch.com right now that confuses new to linux users and again these big youtube channels 
they're new to Linux users as well. They they don't know the difference between uh, Ubuntu and Manjaro and Fedora and Debian and Arch. Uh, it's going to confuse the hell out of them as much as it would your next door neighbor who doesn't know anything about Linux. Other things that plague the big YouTube channels when they cover things like Linux and free and open source software is some of this free and open source software can and will break. It breaks on every operating system. You know, things break on Windows, things break on Mac OS. Some of the software you install on Linux will occasionally break. And surprisingly, some of these YouTubers, especially the tech YouTubers, many of them are surprisingly bad at problem solving. They can't fix things like the people that some of you guys that have not really tech savvy, but you've lived in Linux, you know, six months, maybe you're used to minor things breaking on your system and you figure out how to fix them. You go to a wiki or you go to a forum, you go to askubuntu.com or you go to an IRC chat channel to get support and you know how to fix problems. Some of these big tech channels, man, some of these guys cannot do any basic problem solving on their own. It's actually rather pathetic sometimes watching some of their videos. Again, though, these guys are really entertainers. That's their main job. They're there to entertain. That's what sells their channel. It's how they achieve their success. Not necessarily, you know, because they're not there because of their knowledge or their experience on a subject. And I just want to highlight this fact, you know, about not knowing about the subject you're making a video on. You know, Linus Tech Tips on that uh, installing Steam and Proton on Ubuntu video he did. You know, he told everyone, go grab the latest... Uh, video drivers for your graphics card from NVIDIA or AMD's website. No, <laughs> that's not what you do. You know, and when you watch something like that, you know, I'm screaming at the screen because he just told millions of people, hey, if you're using Ubuntu, go get the latest NVIDIA driver or the latest AMD driver from NVIDIA or AMD's website. That's not what you do. And you're, you could break your machine. <laughs> you can break your system doing that. You get the drivers from Ubuntu's repos. They already have the NVIDIA drivers, <laughs> the AMD drivers there. Yeah, and the correct versions, you know, for that particular Linux distribution, you know. So oh, it's things like that that, you know, kind of frustrate me watching the big YouTubers cover Linux. I think a lot of the big YouTubers don't give Linux or free and open source software the time of day. It's because the fact that it is free and free, I'm talking about free as in cost. The fact that something is free in a lot of people's minds, it equates to it's cheap, right? It's cheap software. That's what free software means. It must be cheap. It must be subpar software. So do we really need like the big YouTubers to cover Linux and free and open source software? Do we need Linux and free and open source software to be out there in mainstream media? Um, uh, I'm not sure if we do. I mean, can we get Linux in the mainstream? Can we get Linux to be part of the zeitgeist? I think at some point, we as Linux users have to realize that we are a small niche of computer users. You know, we, we, we will always be that small niche. And that's fine. Embrace that small niche. Embrace being the 2%. This isn't a popularity contest, right? For everyone on the planet but me switch to Windows tomorrow. I'd still run Linux. Uh, I think most of you guys would too. So again, embrace being the 2%. Own it. And before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They are the producers of the show, my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without them, this show would not be possible. The show is also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen that help support this channel. If you'd like to consider supporting my work, please do so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.